I'm sitting here with Dr. DeLittle, and we're talking about her work with a therapeutic approach called neuroscience and satire in the sand tray. And Madeline, you've been telling us about how you do this work with different mm -hmm. um, issues that mm -hmm. people have. Can you talk a little bit about how you work with children and mm -hmm. how that differs from the work with adults. You've mm -hmm. alluded to it mm -hmm. and how it goes faster with children, but talk some more about that. Yes, uh, adults tend to make static pictures, which then uh, initially, and then they get moved with when they look at look at it from different angles or when I ask a question about the figurines, and they move towards integration in the sand tray. With children, and they know why they're there. They know why they've come there. Even they'll 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 show me. They don't tell me. They show me, show me, show me, show me what you want to work on. Mm -hmm. Now with children, they either don't know or they don't want to say. So I, I might when they I always always meet with the parents first, and then they come in, and after a little while I get them to look around. I said, Do you know why you're here? And very often they'll say, No, I don't. I don't. I don't or I don't know. I say, Okay, well that's all right. Why don't, we, why don't we just play? So that's the end, that's sort of the end, and I'll show them the figurines, I'll show them the sand tray. I have other things, but they're the, the primary primary thing that they play with. And they will start to play, and, and there's a great variation in how they'll play. So some children will make just a picture, and then I'll say, I see a, a, a knight on a, on, a, on a horse, and I see an angel, and I see um, beautiful jewels and flowers. Tell me about your picture. So that's the sort of the static one that the child may make. But generally, uh, they're much more active than that. It's very much more dynamic and often very chaotic and very often two sides with it's fighting, but you don't even know whose side it is. So what I try to... So children come in either sort of what we call immobilized or sort of down-regulated and, and uh, with symptoms of, say... Um, some form of depression or suicidal ideation. So they're sort of depressed and down, uh, down in terms of their arousal level. And there's other children that are very hyper and very active. And so we want balance. We want to bring them both back into balance, into the middle, which we call the play state. So the, with children who are very active, I try to create some order in their play. And I'll follow the play and I will sort of narrate it but I will, I will say, well, what's going on here? How do we know whether there's good guys or bad guys? You know, it seems like, what are they fighting for? So I'm trying to create a sense of purpose, a middle, beginning, and end. And, and when it gets really, if it gets really crazy, I say, let's make a movie. So I'll, I'll film maybe a minute or two of the play, and I say, okay, let's stop that and, and have a look at it. And then I say, what's the next, what happens next? So that there's a story and there's some resolution rather than this just continual chaos. And that's probably the biggest, the most often asked question from therapists is how, what do you do with, with children when they're playing in this never-ending chaotic play that has, seems to have no protagonist, no um, resolution to it. And then People it, dying and coming alive Coming again. back alive again, that's <laughs> right. And I'll, because I'll say, oh, they're all dead. And of course, when they're all dead, there's no play. They can't play. But what we're trying to do is have them move into imagination, which children are really good at, if they are... Naturally, not all children are, but, but some children... All children have the potential. Children who are very anxious tend not to have as much joy and as much freedom to express themselves. They're very much protected in a sort of um, a survival way. And the other children uh, who are much more mobilised tend to be very active but again it's not not a play that has um, necessarily um, it's sort of never ending it's a sort of interminable sort of angst going on so we want some resolution to that so that they begin to have a sense of internal sense of order but also an internal sense of safety so in terms of the sand tray that you've talked about before we talked about imagination and playfulness and creativity mm -hmm. so you're providing there's lots of play, there's lots of imagination, and there's lots of creativity, but it's not in a, in a it's not um, 
providing them any resolution mm-hmm. out of their anxiety. Yeah. Yes. Is that that's is right? It? Yes. So you 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 talk about what's going on with yes. them. You narrate the story, as yes. it were, or lack of story, or you create some kind of story. Yeah. Or help them create some kind of story. Are you surprised by how they first of all how they react to that mm-hmm. intervention and how they change as a result yeah. of that intervention? So both answers are yes, and I can give you an example of a little boy where it was absolute chaos and the dragon was eating everything, and uh, I was I was like you say narrating it, and this little little guy little figurine was being eaten by the dragon, and uh, and I I said well, look at how courageous he is. Yeah. Now this child came to me with uh, not being able to go to school. He was frightened of school. He was a kindergarten child, didn't want to go to school. And every morning was this huge fight and finally the mother gave up even sending him to school. So then he came to me and in the play I was able to say, wow, look at that little guy. He's just so courageous. He's fighting that dragon and now look what's happened to the dragon. The dragon has been put into a cage. So, and then the next thing within the same session, this little boy, uh, was able to laugh, which he hadn't been able to do initially, and he said, now he can have fun. He actually said this of this little figurine, and he put him up like this, and the shield, instead of being a protector, became his parachute, and he was like, tuk, 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 and this little guy was having fun, and he actually said, this boy, little boy said, now he can have fun. So what had happened in that, that 45 minutes, he had moved from being in a um, chaotic state of, of anxiety and, and being mobilized to being much more in a place state of being integrated, of being more um, more peaceful and being able to have fun. And he was able to go to school. No, this was conscious. In the, no, in the, all was... done in a mm-hmm. metaphorical play, mm-hmm. symbolic play. And uh, we never mentioned going to school. But it, he became courageous because his little protagonist in the play became courageous. Courageous and, and then playful. And playful. And he mm-hmm. was able to become playful and courageous. Playful in a, in a fun way. Yeah. Not yeah. playful in the sense of In dragon. a chaotic way, no. In a chaotic way, no. but in a, oh, look at this. Yeah, having I've got fun. got a parachute. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. And then he was able to go to school. Yes. That's yeah. astonishing. And, and, and yeah. he didn't... Uh, he didn't say, now I can go to school. I, when I said, how will you be different? He didn't say, mm. I can go to school. He said, I, I actually don't remember what he said, but it was, um, I said, maybe maybe you'll be able to uh, be a little bit happier. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, sure enough, that, and that that was an absolute surprise to me, that yeah. he would be able to, to and, and so that gave me the confidence to do more and more of this work. And parents will say, I don't know what you did, but... So they, they come in with expectations that I'm going to teach them skills, mm-hmm. but through the play, by creating safety and order in, in the play, there's, they, they, the children will then internalize that. And they are, you were saying this before, they are different. They they're are not different. feeling different? No, they're different at all levels of, of mm-hmm. self. Mm-hmm. They see themselves differently. Can you talk a little bit about the release? <clears throat> so they're stuck in a sense. The same as adults. Stuck that, in a pattern. Stuck yeah. in a pattern, which is chaotic. Mm-hmm. It's still stuck. Mm-hmm. It, and so you're 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 giving them a what a, um, a an ability to kind of be in charge yeah. by being more yeah. courageous. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's an interesting contrast. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about how that energy that gets released from the being less stuck from from not being stuck how that energy changes them at a cellular level you've mm-hmm. talked about it before you've alluded to it yeah how does that happen yeah so just to just pull back a second there the, the this little one was not feeling safe mm-hmm. schools for whatever reason wasn't safe for him so the only way he knew how to keep safe was to stay home right. so that that's that's, that's the, the key stuckness. piece right mm-hmm. that's the stuckness it, it and it, and it's a it's a it's a understandable way to to protect because it, it that's all he knew mm-hmm. is to say no I'm not going to school so by creating safety in the play and and developing a sense of courageousness in with the protagonist mm-hmm. um, it shifted him from from having to withdraw mm-hmm. 
which is the immobilized sort of end of a continuum withdrawal to keep safe, he found his courage. And so it got transformed. And it takes energy to do that, but it, it, it got transformed into being brave and courageous and being able to, to go, go forward. So the energy release mm -hmm. from being stuck does what to him? At a cellular level, because you were talking yes, about that I before. See. Yeah. About so, the, I think yeah. you used the word epigenetics. That's right. Uh, it changes. This is the the my understanding is it, it changes the genetic expression, his genetic expression, mm -hmm. and it changes that which then produces new proteins, which produces uh, new neural pathways. And so, within five hours, there is changes going on, and new neural pathways can be uh, produced, which then gives him the ability to to be able to be courageous and to mm -hmm. be able to go to school. And his parents, in this case, were able to support those little tiny neural mm -hmm. pathways and mm -hmm. help him grow. Yeah. And presumably the teacher did it at school. We, we hope they did. Yeah, no, it was all, it was mm -hmm. all done, all in place. Mm -hmm. um, but he, it, he had to make that step. And it was through feeling the courageousness of the little plastic figurine <laughs> that we were able to change it's at a crazy. genetic it's level. so crazy. Mm -hmm. Hearing it. Yeah, it, I know. Yeah. You have to see it to believe yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.